Not really. Um, this is this is going to be I'm just setting up what we're doing here for you guys. So today we're looking at the question: Was Constantine great? Um, lots of different opinions. Constantine is called Constantine the Great. That's a statue of him um, in Rome, and he is regarded by lots of people, especially the Catholic Church, as like the guy who made Christianity legit and uh, establish the church. And a lot of what we take for granted as Christians um, was formulated by him and his mom. His mother was actually a Christian before he was and prayed for his salvation. Um, and then he became a Christian at that famous battle. Um, and then between he and his mom, they made Christianity like the religion of Rome. Uh, Christmas, we celebrated on December 25th not the day Jesus was born. Um, and the reason we celebrated on December 25th is because Constantine thought that we should replace Saturnalia with a Christian holiday. So when we get all excited December 25th, that's, that's his doing. Um, Easter being this weird uh, piling together of Christ's resurrection and fertility symbols like bunnies and eggs. Um, that's him as well because Estrus was a holiday before Christ rose. Estrus was something that pagans celebrated and made a big deal out of. And he and his mom thought, well, while people are celebrating fertility, let's instead have them celebrate Christ's resurrection. So it's good to celebrate Christ's birth. It's good to celebrate Christ's resurrection. I'm not telling you don't celebrate Christmas and Easter. But those holidays, the way that we have received them, are Constantine's doing. Um, and so he made a monster impact in Christianity. And even if you are not a Roman Catholic, you still are um, in his legacy as far as the flavor of Christianity that you experience. So huge, huge plot point. He did lots of good, and then he did lots of things that people kind of scratch their heads at and go, this is not what I want to know. Um, so I am going to divide you, actually, first I should divide you into two groups. So we're just going to say one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Okay? Okay, now, if you are hypothesis one, if I said one and pointed to you, you are going to spend the next mm, 20, 25 minutes working with your other ones, okay? And you are going to prove hypothesis one to me. Hypothesis one is Constantine was great because he stopped the persecution of Christians and allowed the church to grow greatly in numbers and influence under his reign. If I said one in front of you, your job, whether or not you agree with it, your job is to prove hypothesis one in the next 20-ish minutes, okay? And then hypothesis two, if I said two and pointed to you, your hypothesis two, Constantine was not great. Because under his reign, the church exchanged purity for popularity and left the simple teachings of Christ. Okay, so uh, if I said one, you're going to, in a moment, not right now, you're going to gather over on this side of the room and sit with each other. And if I said two, you're going to gather on this part of the room and sit with each other. And you are going to use your Bibles. Any internet connected devices that you have are fine. And I want you to work for the next 20 minutes to prove your hypothesis. And then in the last 20 ish minutes of class, we're going to have a little bit of a debate and hear the sides um, point and counterpoint each other. Um, and now you may wind up on the side of the room that I assigned you to, and you don't necessarily, in your heart, believe hypothesis one and two. But for the sake, of this exercise, you're going to pretend. Yes. Not for the sake of this class. I want to have it. Okay? Ones, twos. One, two. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so hypothesis one, I'll let group one uh, go first. Hypothesis one, again, was that Constantine was great because he stopped the persecution of Christians and allowed the church to grow greatly in numbers and influence under his reign. So, somebody here want to give us some, some support, some evidence, scripture, um, something to help us with that idea. Well, in Matthew 5, 5, it says that blessed are the 
So their, their humility uh, that they achieved because of persecution paid off finally, right? Okay. Um, give, somebody else, give me, some, give me some data, give me some support to that idea. There. I know, without Constantine ruling, there wouldn't be really official established churches. It probably would have taken more time. But with Constantine rule, they're actually able to officially uh, put the churches in place, establish the grounds for a church, and actually start out spreading the gospel without any kings or the problem. Okay, totally true. If I, if I, uh, you know, under under Nero or under Diocletian, if I were to come and try to evangelize Aaron, I would have to do it very sneakily and very covertly, and hope that she doesn't turn me into the authorities for doing so. But under under Constantine, it's it's encouraged. The state is doing that, and so uh, you know it's a it's a, a huge benefit for evangelism. What else? What other points and and arguments in favor of that position can you find? Well, okay. um, God used him. God used him. Okay. <laughs> to, to to do what kind of stuff? Um. So. In many ways. <laughs> okay, that's that's profound. Okay, alrighty, that's recorded for all posterity. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, hypothesis two people. Uh, hypothesis two people. Uh, Constantine was not great because under his reign the church exchanged purity for popularity and left the simple teachings of Christ. Give me some evidence, some uh, scripture, some historical proof. What do you have for that idea? So some historical proof is uh, that he tried to ease Rome into Christianity by compromising uh, Roman holidays and replacing them with Christian holidays, but he was uh, a pretty bad. And in where is it? Revelation 2, uh, verse... 14, uh, it's uh, Jesus talking to the church of Pergamum. Uh, but I have a few things against you because you have there Cooper, there's teaching of Balaam, you have the teaching of uh, but a stumbling block to the fullest Jew of Israel. Uh, well, they still had that people in the church weren't uh, completely pure. They were people who still uh, said they were Christian, but they would still uh, worship the holy God of Roman They would not. Uh, actually convert to Christianity. And Christianity then became just a trend uh, for people to gain power. And they were just, um, they were just, Christianity became a trend and uh, that um, it just became a state, a state of war, a way to uh, become better in that guys. Okay. Uh, people just used it to gain political advantage or just to look spiritual to make themselves look wiser or feel wiser. Okay. Instead of like the exchange of the real personal God who saved you from uh, like hell. And um and instead of like Jesus in that sense it became Jesus instead of just a validating term of word. Just um yeah make, make yourself look more spiritual. Okay. Also, um, I think uh, Constantine kind of, in a sense, perverted the sense of the church. I think that, um, was it Constantine himself? Hey, 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 h
um, sharing their love for Christ and um, Christ's love for the world. But then um, Constantine made it into like some very like formal establishment with like leaders and everything, systems. And it, um, nowadays, when you think of a church, what do you think of? You just think of the building. You, know, you think of sitting in like a, on some, every Sunday morning, just sitting there, just listening to a pastor. Um, it's kind of like it, but it should be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it should be um, it should just be the Christians now you have like different churches, you have different establishments you have Baptists, you have preach you have the Catholic Church and you have all different um, different congregations all separate saying oh I'm different from you I'm better than you, but in reality the church should be just all the Christians just the church just, um, just like the body of Christ, not the building. Can we turn the flyer on now? Okay. Yeah, turn the flyer on. Okay. 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 For the second time, for the second time, uh, I'm going to give a few minutes over here to rebuttals of things that you heard oh, here. Okay. okay, so I, I need you to respond to me. Do you honestly think that was Constantine's objective to actually break the church apart like that? Not his objective, but it's So you think it, he made it just so he could have faith faith without Rome, without right? Is that what you think? Well, what if he had the intention of actually having established real faith, and it wasn't just the, and it wasn't just the people thought that they felt that they chose not to have a real faith? No, no. First of all, we're not talking about Constantine himself. We're talking about Rome as an institution. Oh no! no we're not talking about Constantine the Great. Can we go now? Are you done? I'm waiting for an answer. You're going to wait for an answer. Yeah, you're you're in your time. Yeah, yeah, maybe he did um, intend for it to be good, but ultimately it didn't work out that way. Maybe, yeah, maybe what it doesn't matter if he wanted it to be. But the way you said it kind of sounded like. But that's not the point. No, I didn't say he heard it intentionally. You didn't say you weren't specific. We're talking about college level debates here. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about the whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so your, your rebuttal to their claim that the, um, that Constantine diluted or perverted the faith was that that was the choice of the individual Christian, whether or not they were legit. Exactly. Um, and so, and so their, their rebuttal is, or their, Challenge to your position is that it's not Constantine's fault that people were fake. Constantine's motives himself were were honorable. That's what you're saying. Okay, cool. Uh, a couple minutes over here for you to rebut what you have heard from them. But though he tried to do good, like he didn't do good. Oh, he oh he did okay. He didn't do great. You know? you're about so you're, he, you're expecting. Hey, hey, don't interrupt. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like a lot of people have good intentions, but if the ends don't come out the way they're supposed to, they're not going to do good. If you think about, if you think about what happens down the line, right? Because like you read in the book, right? The fire of persecution had kept the church here. Toleration resulted in the introduction of elements which voted ill for the future. Now we got to think about the future. What happens down the line? You yeah. got. You got the church becoming more of a political game now, and it becomes tyrannical and controlling, and that all comes from constant big words. <laughs> well, that's like, not no, 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 Wait, yeah, okay, okay, anyways, okay, anyways, when you think about the, when I ask people about the church republic, right, all they think about is the Catholic church. That's not what the church is. The church should be a spiritual connection with Christ and a, and a personal relationship with him. But that's not what it came down to. Constantine turned it into this form of tradition, just like the Roman traditions of sacrifice and worship. That's what he turned it into. Form of sacrifice and worship. It wasn't a personal relationship with Christ. Hey, like it. Look at me when I'm talking. <laughs> oh, oh, why look at someone who's running in circles? It's wasting my time. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a staged debate. You don't actually have to hate each other. Okay. Now, I, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give uh, two minutes over here for closing. Two minutes over here for closing. 
And then right. two minutes over here. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So basically, that's what happened in Israel as well. Like, they actually had good intention, but when a lot of people who were in Israel, they what would they think of if they were thinking of the church? Or they would think of their faith. They would think of a temple where they do sacrifices onto God. They would think of um, the Pharisees and Sadducees who were their leaders and their elders. That's the same thing as a lot of people think today as a church. They think of a building, they think of preachers, they think of Catholicism. In conclusion, okay. I really appreciate you guys. Um, your standpoint was well stated also. And I honestly think that this was down to a personal choice thing. Like, it's not his fault that the, the tip of the mouth, it's not his fault <laughs> that the church is the, the way it is today. It was a choice of the people. He had good intentions. But then again, even though purity was the fire, it's because of human nature. And just like Alec was doing, we run in circles and we mm -hmm. end up failing over and over again because it's within our nature. Not to roast you or anything, I'm just using an example. Yeah. But it, it all boils down to our human sin nature. Maybe we don't. Maybe we do have the good intentions, maybe we don't. And so in the end, we're all still one body and one church. Cool. Okay. So closing, closing statement over there. Elijah, you remind me a lot of Constantine. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know, you have, you, have, you have really good intentions of, you have really good intentions of making Constantine look good, but like Constantine, what you did just doesn't make sense. Whoa, whoa. Let's see, let's try to not, not talk about Constantine. Oh, no, 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 I'm talking about Constantine. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, like, okay, Constantine, he did have good intentions, but we're talking about the results here, and what, and the results is what makes a person great or not great. And the hypothesis is he was great or he wasn't great. We stand with he wasn't great because the results of what came out, it wasn't how God wanted the church to be. He wanted a theocracy. He wanted his influence coming down on the people. But he didn't want the fakeness or the artificial love. Or I guess Okay, you got one minute, Justin. Okay. So, yeah. like Alex said, it's, it's dependent on why you think Constantine was great or he wasn't great. It's got the ball rolling. Like, if a man sees a woman walking in the road and there's a huge rock in the way, he moves the rock, but there's a hill, and the hill smashes houses and towns. Yeah, who's fault is it? The person who moved the rock or the people who were in the way? Just a terrible of life. Church history class. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Allen, I'm going to say one we're, we're out of time. The beat is over! Hey, but you can see why this um, this divided the church under I Constantine, right? Okay, because I'm, even under Constantine, there were people who said, uh, I'm not going to go to the big fancy rock church that Constantine paid for in my town because that's Constantine's church. And I would rather keep going to my house church with my people who we all have scars from persecution. And we're going to just sit around and ignore Constantine's Christianity and be our church. But other people were like, no, if I go to Constantine's church, I might get a job in government. And so there's a choice of the So the, the event that's happening here, the event that's happening here is the same thing that happened in the church under his rule. And so um, this is a, it's a good picture. It's a good picture of what occurred when he and his mom took over the faith. So, uh, yeah, very good exercise. Thank you. I hope you learned some things and yes. felt some stuff. And so, there you go. Thank you. We will see each other. Good job. Right. <laughs>